Okay, let's put the clutch in. The clutch pieces, we're going to put in new ones here. And always make sure that you thoroughly clean them with something like this uh, carburetor cleaner or parts or electrical parts cleaner, brake cleaner. It's something that leaves no residue. Just because they're new, they're definitely not clean because they ship them with uh, preservative oil on them so they don't rust. It's also very helpful to have the centering tool so that you get everything lined up. We offer these on boxer2valve.com. I've already cleaned the parts. We're going to be installing a Siebenrock Basic Plus clutch. This is a really awesome clutch. So now the components go together. And this uh, diaphragm spring, is, this rides on here. And as the, as the um, clutch is actuated, these little fingers kind of slide on there. So what I like to do is on that part on the back, on these little fingers, just put a little bit of uh, grease. I'm using a Liquid Molly LM47. It's a really good grease. Definitely don't need much. This stuff ha has a tendency to really stay put, but I put a little bit on those fingers. And a little bit, a little smear back here. Okay. Well, this is where we need to use these special tools to install the clutch. I'm going to stick one in there like so. Get my spring put in there. And get this one started. Okay, so holding the clutch in center position with the tool, now comes the tedious task of tightening all of the uh, tool bolts here to bring the clutch and then compress the spring. Okay, so I've got all the bolts torqued down here or tightened down, so I've drawn the clutch assembly together using the alignment tool. And now I'm going to put in the uh, actual clutch bolts, three of them. Now with these bolts tight, I can remove three special tools. Okay, I've got all the bolts in by hand, I'm just going to go through and torque the specification. In this case is 23 newton meters. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and, and torqued all the clutch bolts, and I just want to mention again the centering tool and the importance of it. Um, the clutch disc has to be perfectly centered inside of the clutch plates. It, this is really important, especially when you go to assemble, because the, the gearbox splines have to line up with the clutch splines and all the bolt holes have to line up too. Without using that tool, even though you may 
be able to get pretty close, it's not going to be as, as exact as with the tool. And there's also a different one for 81 on models. It's a good thing to, to have if you're doing a clutch job, definitely. That's that. Now we've got the flywheel installed, the clutch installed, and it's time to put the gearbox back in now. Okay, we've got the gearbox all cleaned up here, and we're going to replace the input shaft seal. It was leaking pretty badly and also the neutral switch right here. So we got to get this old seal out first of all. It's pretty, pretty uh, stiff. That's why it was leaking. There we go. Okay, and then the new seal goes into place here, and this is pretty much what the tool looks like to drive it in. You can also use a socket or something like that. Just place it over the seal and Give it a few taps in. Okay. The neutral switch. These things are prone to leak, but we have a much improved part that we offer. It's made out of brass, as you can see. As, instead of the aluminum, and we've yet to have one of these leak. They're really, really good. Much better than the original. It's a, this is a great time to replace this switch because it's a real pain in the butt to do it in the bike. It's possible, but it's never going to be as easy as right now. And there's a thick crush ring that needs to be replaced as well. Okay. Now, very important is you put grease on the splines. We've cleaned these off real nicely and with it. Liquid Molly LM47 going to coat these splines with grease. Okay, if you don't want to do super crazy, just make sure that the splines are thoroughly covered. You don't want to get too crazy with the grease. Um, and glob it on too much because it'll just fling out and get over the clutch disc, but the, the splines need to be filled. That should be good. And then on the same thing, we'll do the same thing inside the clutch disc. Okay, so I've attached the wires to the switch. A lot easier to do now. And reinstall this gearbox. Boom. There we go. And it all lines up thanks to the cool tool. All right, I've got all the bolts started in the gearbox to engine. Before I tighten the bolts up, I'm just rotating the engine at the front of the crankshaft a couple times just to get the clutch perfectly centered. And now we're ready to tighten. This screw here by the shifter can be a little bit of a tough one to get to uh, with standard tools. So we take uh, a 
Allen wrench like that and cut it off real short and it works like a charm to get in that tight spot. Okie dokie, that's all done. All right, okay, so now I've got the gearbox back in, all the bolts are tight. Next is gonna be reinstalling the release assembly. And there's a few parts that I'm gonna change out. First of all, the uh, rubber boot on here was cracked, should be replaced. So I've cleaned it out, I've loosened it, loosened the adjuster. I'm gonna fill some grease in here here again, Liquid Molly LM47 is what I like, and put the new boot on. And then on the piston, I'm going to change out that seal. That's that. And then on the rod, I'm going to change out this felt. It's kind of a good idea to soak that in some gear oil first. So I've taken the felt and soaked it in some oil and here's a little tip that I have. They're kind of difficult to push into the bearing. It's a tight fit. So I have just a bushing that I made and I put the uh, seal or the felt in to this bushing first, do all the work essentially off the bike. And then once the, the felt is inside the bushing, then I just push it right in and works like a charm. Okay, so now I've got the uh, so I've got the this bushing on there the, to uh, sort of compress the felt seal, and now I can simply put the rod in and push it through the bushing. It goes right in. The bushing comes out. The felt is installed. Another nice little tip for you. Now we'll put in the rest of the parts. The bearing race, the needle bearing. There we go, pissing it in. And the, the uh, pivot pin, I'm going to grease that guy up a little bit. And there's a grease nipple on there. Should be greased every so often when you service the bike. Shoot a little extra grease in here. And then the little clip goes in, finally, here. Okay, before I uh, attach the clutch cable, um, it's very important to lubricate both ends of the clutch cable. Uh, to do so, you need to go up to the lever, first of all, and pull the barrel out. Remove it from the cable. Actually, this one's a little bit bent. This is what happens. I'll just tell you what happens. As you move the clutch in and out, the clutch lever, it, the barrel has to spin inside the lever. If it gets stuck because the grease is all hard and you know it's dirty, then what happens is the cable is doing this. It's not flowing. It's not actually it's changing its angle. And, it'll, and over time, just like if you take a piece of wire and bend it back and forth, it'll break. And that's why clutch cables usually break. 
So it's a, something important to do is always keep this very clean and lubricated. So you just want to get in there in any way you can, clean all the crud out of that cavity. And then shoot some grease up in there. Thoroughly clean the barrel. There we go. Now the grease, if you put enough in there, a lot of it comes out. That's perfect. Just wipe it off. And then the same thing goes at the other end, at the gearbox. You want to grease the fitting there too, so that the barrels turn as the clutch is being actuated. So now on this end, we're putting a bit of grease on the fitting in the barrel as well and hook the cable in. Now there's a base adjustment that you need to make on the clutch cable. You need to measure 202 millimeters. You can, what I, I do is I just have a, a cable tie that I've cut to exactly 202 millimeters, a piece of welding rod, something like that. And you're going to go from the from the deepest point of the cutout for the cable, where the cable barrel is, to the metal end of the cable. That should be 202 millimeters. And you're gonna adjust that by adjusting the cable length. And once you have that set, which I have already right now, then I set my free play here at the, at the rear adjuster. Screw that in until you have just a little bit of free play about one to two millimeters at the lever, and then tighten the lock nut down. And that, that clutch is properly adjusted. All right, so that's it. Gearbox back in. We're ready to move on to the next thing, which is going to be installing the swing arm with new swing arm bearings. So see you on the next episode.